Hello, and welcome to Opentiera. Today we're diving into the captivating world of Burundi. Did you know that despite being one of Africa's smallest countries, Burundi boasts a geographic diversity that includes mountains, hills, plateaus, lakes, and savanna plains, all packed into an area just under 28,000 square kilometers. This land of contrasts is located in East Africa's Great Rift Valley, offering breathtaking natural beauty at every turn. As one of Africa's smallest countries, Burundi's landscapes pack geographic diversity into an area just under 28,000 square kilometers. Located in East Africa's Great Rift Valley, Burundi's topography includes mountains, hills, plateaus, lakes, and savanna plains. The backbone of Burundi's landscape is the central highland region with an average elevation over 1,500 meters. Steep mountains and rolling hills carved by rivers and erosion make up roughly 75% of Burundi's terrain. The high point is Mount Heha at 2,685 meters in the Kibera National Park. In contrast, the lowland plains stretch out along Burundi's borders. The Ruzizi River Valley and Lake Tanganyika form natural boundaries with the Democratic Republic of Congo to the west. The mosquito-filled Ruzizi National Park sits near where the Ruzizi flows north into Lake Tanganyika, protecting hippos, crocodiles, and over 500 bird species. While the Congo-Nile Divide crosses its interior highlands, it also gives rise to two key bodies of water. Burundi's northern slopes ultimately feed the White Nile, while the southern highlands form the headwaters of the Ruzizi River, feeding the Congo Basin to the Atlantic Ocean. This makes Burundi a key water tower in Africa's hydrology. Their largest city and economic capital is Bujumbura, with over 800,000 residents located on the shores of Lake Tanganyika. Other major cities include the political capital Gitega and the population centers of Muyinga, Ngozi and Ruyigi, clustered in the smaller Northern Highlands region. Burundi was originally inhabited by the Twa people, a group of hunter-gatherers and potters. Beginning around 1000 CE, Hutu farmers and Tutsi pastoralists moved into the area, absorbing the Twa into their societies. For several hundred years, the Hutu and Tutsi lived in relative harmony with fluid groups and shared regional authority. However, in the 19th century, the Tutsi consolidated power over the Hutu under the rule of the Mwami or King, which lasted until colonialism. In 1899, Burundi became part of German East Africa, along with Rwanda and Tanzania. The Germans exerted influence over the Mwami, but also helped improve infrastructure. After World War I, the League of Nations handed control of the region over to Belgium. The Belgians ruled through the Tutsi minority, using a system of indirect rule, and promoted ethnic divisions between Hutu and Tutsi groups. All groups benefited from improved health care, though virtually no Burundians received education. In 1962, Burundi gained full independence from Belgium. Unfortunately, ethnic tensions between Hutus and Tutsi were exacerbated as the groups vied for political power. Over the next several decades, Burundi was plagued by ethnic violence and brutal civil war. There were genocides of both Hutus and Tutsis, military coups, and years of unstable leadership. Finally, in 2005, multi-party democratic elections were held. Pierre Nkurunziza rose to power and ushered in a period of reconciliation. However, Nkurunziza stayed in office for three terms amid growing political tensions. As of 2022, the World Bank estimates that Burundi has a total population of 12.8 million people. Its largest city, Bujumbura, is home to roughly 800,000 residents alone. Its two major ethnic groups are the Hutu and the Tutsi. Hutus make up about 85% of the population and Tutsis 
There is a small minority of indigenous Twa peoples as well. Ethnic tensions between Hutus and Tutsis fueled genocides and civil wars in Burundi's modern history, though the Kaun Burundi tree has aimed to heal divisions in recent years. Most Burundians identify as Christians, with about 60% practicing Catholicism and around 10 to 15% Protestantism. Those practicing Islam make up just around 2 to 4% of Burundi's people. Many indigenous beliefs from tribal religions have also endured over time, with around 20% of the population practicing them. Burundi recognizes two official languages. The majority speak Kirundi, and French is recognized for administrative purposes. Swahili is also spoken along the eastern and southern borders. As of 2022, the World Bank estimates that Burundi's GDP is around $3.34 billion. As a densely populated landlocked country, it faces major economic challenges. Though rich in natural resources, decades of ethnic conflict, political instability, corruption and infrastructure deficits have constrained its economy and kept much of the population impoverished. Agriculture is a mainstay, employing about 80% of Burundians. Main crops include coffee, cotton and tea, which account for 90% of exports. However, frequent droughts and soil exhaustion hamper outputs. Most people rely on subsistence farming, while aid groups work to introduce better technologies. Still, food insecurity persists, especially in rural areas. Manufacturing is a small part of the GDP and largely consists of agricultural processing like beer, soft drinks and soap, along with some mining activity. The largest source of foreign investment is Belgium, and trade relies heavily on neighboring countries. Informal cross-border trade is also significant, though not fully quantified. As a tiny, densely populated country in Africa's Great Lakes region, Burundi holds little global influence, yet remains deeply impacted by regional geopolitical forces. Its location between warring groups endangers their development, yet also suggests potential as a partner for peace. Landlocked between Tanzania, Rwanda and the Democratic Republic of Congo, most of Burundi's foreign policy involves its much larger neighbors. Decades of refugees fleeing regional violence and dictatorships have strained Burundi's resources. Burundi's political instability has also adversely affected its relationship with its neighbors, most notably in 1996, when Tanzania, Uganda, Kenya, Rwanda, Zaire, or what is now known as Congo, Ethiopia and Cameroon, imposed an economic blockade on Burundi after Pierre Bouyoya staged a coup and became president. With vibrant traditions of dance, music, arts and oral heritage, Burundi has a deeply rich cultural identity that persists despite recent decades of turmoil. Once celebrating kings in elaborate rituals, dance remains integral to Burundian culture today through the internationally renowned Royal Drummers of Burundi Troop. Their energetic routines blending drumming, singing, costumes and acrobatics harken back to ancient ceremonies with the sacred Karienda drum anchoring symbolic resonance. Burundian visual arts are also renowned, from decorated papyrus panels with geometric motifs to finely woven baskets showing exquisite craftsmanship. While textile making originated for practical daily uses, Burundian pottery, beadwork and basketry integrate elaborate decorative elements drawing from legends and nature. From drumming to poetry recitals and jokes, Burundian social gatherings involve participating in and passing down oral literary traditions that enliven their language and values through generations. While recent ethnic violence severely threatened Burundi's heritage, the country still takes pride in long-held customs. 
Through museums and global showcasing of dances like the Intori, Burundians preserve cultural touchstones, benefiting both tradition and tourism. Burundi's culture persists through maintaining iconic practices, exporting talented performers and artists, and celebrating rituals and social exchanges, bonding community despite hardship. What aspects of Burundian heritage intrigue you most? Let me know in the comments below. This East African gem is home to a tapestry of dishes deeply rooted in its cultural heritage, ubugali, a fundamental dish crafted from maize flour, presenting itself as a thick porridge. Versatile and comforting, it often accompanies various stews or sauces, serving as a meal's foundation. Isombe cassava leaves simmered in a delectable blend of peanut sauce and spices, delivering a robust and aromatic dish. Matoke ripe plantains cooked in savory sauces, offering a delightful fusion of sweet and savory flavors, cherished not only in Burundi, but across East Africa. Ibihaza, a fermented cassava dish that introduces a tangy distinctive element to Burundian cuisine, prepared using traditional fermentation methods. Owagwa, a fermented beverage derived from bananas, boasting a unique and refreshing taste, an integral part of Burundi's culinary heritage. If you enjoyed this video on Burundi, you'll love this next video.